Welcome. In this session, we will demonstrate our DXF export strategy specifically designed for Vectric software. The goal is to eliminate errors and ensure that your CNC processes your job as expected. This strategy allows you to pass depth information by working around the Vectric rule of one layer, one depth. It will also make smart toolpath decisions for you and inform you of these decisions at the end of the export. We have written Vectric gadgets to 1. Help you set up your tooling templates and 2. Verify that your job has all the required toolpaths. It does this by reviewing layer information and either generating required toolpaths or informing you of missing toolpaths. In summary, it will automate the majority of the tasks that you currently do manually. Let's start by turning on the Vectric strategy. You do this by opening the Cabinet Sense machining database. On the Layers tab, you have a 3D DXF depth strategy group. Turn the CAM package from None to Vectric. By doing that, all of our other export strategies have been automatically changed to work with uh, the Vectric strategy that we've developed. You can choose uh, a solution for pocket pocketing. Either you can satisfy a pocket by doing a pocket strategy in Vectric, or if the tool width allows, you can do an inside profile. You gain efficiency by using a profile, but you get better quality by doing a pocket. We'll choose efficiency. If we're going to use an inside profile to do a pocketing for us, we have to tell Cabinet Sense how much of an overlap the tool has to have. So, for example, if we go around the inside of a rectangle on opposite sides, what overlap do we require our tool to have? So we're saying 20% minimum, and if we achieve that, we'll change it from a pocket to a profile. You can choose to use the actual depths of all your drills or dados, etc., that are defined in the database, or you can use the maximum depth. Depending on how you do your CNC processing, one makes more sense than the other. We'll use actual depths in our example. You can choose between label names having the actual depth or a generic label. We'll use actual depth. Finally, we can produce a layer report at the end of an export that will tell you the decisions that Cabinet Sense has made for you. You can turn it off, have it only on screen, in HTML, in the export folder, or both. Finally, you need to have the hole diameter specified. So in this case, it means five millimeters is the largest drill bit that our CNC has. Anything, any hole that is larger than five millimeters has to use some sort of a pocket or a profiling strategy to clear it out. Also, tell us the width of your clear, uh, pocket clearing tools. So in this case, I have a quarter inch tool and I've got a five millimeter tool. When that is done, close the database, refresh the P-Store, and we're ready to export. Okay, here is our export report. So for the machining summary for Vectric, we have, are going to use a 1 8 inch bit uh, and it will be drilled all the way through the material. We have a five millimeter drilling bit that will drill some holes 10 millimeter deep, some 11, some will go all the way through uh, and those are for hinge clips. We have a shelf pin, 12 millimeters deep, and a drawer slide, 10 millimeters deep. Inside profile, using a quarter inch tool, and is for a dado groove, five millimeters deep. Finally, a line profile, five millimeter tool bit, and going 8.1 millimeters deep. Uh, if that is what you're expecting, we can go ahead and continue on to Vectric. Otherwise, you may want to review the machining database and find out why 
we've got different depths for different hinge clips, and perhaps we need to make a machining change to fix that. So let's just jump back to the machining database. We'll go to hinging. It was hinge clips. And if we just scroll through, here is three different depths for this particular hinge clip. So if we change them to all be 10, we will eliminate that particular problem. Let's leave it for now so we can see how this uh, gets handled in Vectric. One final thing before we head off to the Vectric software. In our CNC preferences, we have an overdrill allowance. If you set this to a non-zero value, Cabinet Sense will add whatever value, in this case, half a millimeter, to the depth of any machining instruction that is going to go all the way through your material. So in that case, um, drilling through a material will actually drill a half a millimeter into your spoil board. As we mentioned at the beginning of this session, we've written a few gadgets for you to help you with your processing. To install the gadgets, click on the Install New Gadget menu option and navigate to wherever you've got your uh, Cabinet Sense library installed. Click on the Vectric folder and there are your gadgets. So install all three of them. The first thing that we want to do is we're going to set up our tool templates. What we want to accomplish is that we want to create a tool for every tool that we have in our CNC. And for each of those tools, we want to describe the uh, machining instructions that it can handle for us. So we'll start with the tool setup. There is a set of vectors that comes with your library. And again, inside the Cabinet Sense library in the Vectric folder, you've got two different sets of vectors, one for uh, metric and one for imperial. So choose the measurement system that is right for you. So let's take a look at what these vectors look like. All they are are vectors that our tool setup gadget will use to generate toolpaths for you. So we have a circle for our drill bits, inside profiles, pocketing profiles, line profiles, uh, fast cut and slow cut, which is the monikers for how we cut out parts, uh, the labels that we assign to the parts that we cut out. It also has a seed tool path. So this is what we use to generate uh, tool paths for your specific tools. Now, just a note, these files, both of these should be read only so that you don't overwrite them. You use them to generate new tool paths, but don't overwrite them. Okay, let's go ahead and do one tool. So we've selected our metric version, and we're going to go to our tooling database and select the tool that we use in our, in our router. So in this case, let's do a drill bit, 1 8 inch drill bit. And you can set these. The purpose of, of uh, this video is not to give you any information on how you set up your tools or the options that you use but more to just how you use the gadgets. What kind of strategies do we want to employ with this 1 8 inch drill bit? And we just basically want to drill with it. We can add a note to the toolpath as well. So in this case, we would add drill, but we'll just leave it blank. And if you look over in the toolpaths, it's now created a drilling, a, a toolpath for drilling with a 1 8 inch drill bit for a depth of, in this case, one millimeter. And it's only a sample. This will be used 
to generate the actual tool paths you need when we process a job. So again, you will go into this and you will set up your options. We'll now save this. So we're back inside of our library, inside of our Vectric folder, and I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm just going to call it Tools. And let's call this uh, Drill 0.125. We'll go ahead, do another tool. Don't save the changes. And let's select a 5 millimeter drill bit. And do the same thing. Now, if we look at it, the toolpath generated, it's a diameter of five millimeters going one millimeter deep. And again, it's a drilling toolpath. Let's do an end mill of some sort. Okay, let's do a down cut. So here's a case where perhaps we're using multiple vendors for our tools, and we have a Royce down cut bit and an Amana one. So we can, if we leave the toolpath note, we know now whatever we put in here, it's going to be called Amana at this case, and we'll use it for inside line profiles and pockets, but we won't use it to cut out our parts. For that, we'll use a compression bit. It's now created several different uh, profiles for us. Uh, inside profile, pocketing profile, and line profiles. One for being partial depth and one for being all the way through. So let's save that. And we'll call this a down cut of 0.25 and we'll call it an Amana one. And we would do this again for every different tool. I'm going to do a couple more. I'm going to do a compression bit. And this time, I'll only use it for cutting out parts. And again, you can see the different tool paths that are being generated. And this was a point zero point two five, and it is an a, sorry a Royce. Last one that we'll do. I'm going to use a bit called a hogger, and the purpose of it is to clear out the vast majority of the tool or of the material. Uh, on the cutout layer. So again, I'll use it for a fast cut, slow cut, but I'll position it a little bit outside the line so that my final pass will be with my actual cutout, my compression bit. But most of the work will be done by the hogger. And I'm going to enter hogger as the toolpath note. Again, fast cut, slow cut, and it's a hogger. Let's go ahead and process our first job. We'll use the batch processor to bring in our parts. And there they are. So what we want to do now is have our gadget, take a look at all of our different layers and generate the specific tool paths needed for this job. And it'll do that by asking you to pull in the tools that you've already defined. So now it's asking you for a tool that can do a line profile, 
The tool is five millimeters in diameter. It's going to go 8.1 millimeters deep. If you also look in the bottom left hand corner, you'll also see that same information displayed. So we set up a tool. Here's a down cut five millimeter Royce. So we'll use that. It's going to pull in the six layers and we can say, just load the tool paths. We don't need to create the missing layers. Our gadget has gone on to the next layer and it's found a 1 8 inch drill bit. And again, go back to our tools and pull in the 1 8 inch drill bit. It's now looking for a tool to do the fast cut. So if you remember, we're actually going to do a fast cut in or cut out of our parts in two different steps. We're going to use a hogger. And I'm going to go back this time and I'm going to bring in the compression bit. And now I've got a quarter inch profile or inside profile, quarter inch bit, and I'll use my down cut. And now, finally, I'm asking for a five millimeter drill bit. And there it is. Okay. We've now got a message. Our generation is complete. Cabinet Sense, the gadget, has created seven new tool paths for you. And those new tool paths are the ones that have different depths, 10, 11, 12, etc. Okay. Now we could have done this a lot easier if instead of pulling in each tool each time we do a job, we create uh, another template that has all of the tools that are currently in our CNC. So let's just do that. Let's go ahead and we're going to delete all of the tool paths. I'm just gonna start pulling in Let's say that every one of these is in our CNC. Uh, in, in theory, you know, you could have 20 different tools, uh, different vendors for the, for the same kind of tool bit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I'm going to try to load them in the order that I think I would process them. So I might do my drilling first. And then I'll pull in my 5 millimeter drill bit. And how about... Let's do our down cuts. And that was the five millimeter. I'll pull in my quarter inch. And now I'm going to pull in my hogger. And finally, I'm going to pull in my compression bit. So pretty much the way that I want to process them. I'll do my drilling. And I could now start ordering and I can say, well, maybe I want to move down my drill throughs and put them all at the end. But maybe I want to keep all of the five millimeters together. So really up to you how you want to handle it. Let's say that's the way I want to do it. I will move my slow cuts up first. Okay, so hogger first and then the uh, compression bit. Select all the tool paths. I'll save them all again, but now I'm going to back up and now I'm going to create another folder. And I'll call it Sheet Strategies. Because maybe what I'm going to have is plywood strategies and particle board strategies, etc. I'm just going to call this one my general tool, tool path. So if I don't have anything specific, this is the one I'm going to use. Delete them all. I still have my job with all my layers. Let's run the checker again. It's asking for a tool, five millimeters. I'm simply going to go back to my sheet strategies and pull in my general tool path. And we're done. If I run the checker again, 
it says everything's ready to go. Okay, so now you can see we've got a lot of toolpaths. Some of them are used, some of them aren't. But if we go and recalculate, it will definitely tell us which ones are being used and which ones aren't. And notice I had set my drill through over drill allowance by half a millimeter. So here's an example where it's telling me I'm going to cut through the material, which is OK. There we go. So now we know exactly which toolpaths are being used. And if I'm processing a large job, I can increase how fast uh, my, my, apply, my applying toolpaths will be by deleting all of the ones that I don't use. So this is the sum of what's being used in the job today. I'll go ahead and let's nest. And finally, what we want to do is use these toolpaths to apply to all the different sheets that I've got in my job. And for that, we have one final gadget. And this is a takeoff on the uh, Vectric version. And all it does now is use the toolpaths that are defined in the toolpath layer rather than going to the file. If I click OK, I'll let it go. And there we have it. You've now got two sheets with the second sheet only having four different kinds of uh, machining instructions. Go ahead and generate your G code and off you go. And we don't need to save this because we'll generate this every time from our common or general uh, strategies. I'll conclude with the following statement. Having the depth passed in your DXF gives you so many advantages. For example, when you change or if you change your data depth in cabinet sense, that change is automatically picked up by this strategy. You don't have to go back to your layers or your tool paths and change your depth information, etc. All of that is handled automatically for you. If you don't have your sheet size specified exactly the right thickness in Vectric, it's still going to work correctly because the thickness of the sheet compared to the actual thickness you entered is all taken into, comp into account. And so it becomes very hard for you to make a mistake or forget a step by going in this direction. I hope this has been helpful to you, and thank you very much for watching.